this video will be something you could be able to follow. I have four windows set up on two monitors. First window is going to be where we're going to work. This is, in this case, the Spanish version, but it will be the same whether it's French or Russian. Here we have our proof to make sure that our work is done in this window. Now we move. And this monitor, the third window I have is the English exercise that we're getting ready to translate, so we have it as an example. And on the fourth window, on the second monitor, we have Google Translate all set up ready to go. So we're going to go through the exercise of setting up a translation. First, go back to the main monitor, the first window. Here is where we're going to say new, it's the first button, it's going to be new exercise. You click on that, come over here. So now I'm going to scroll over to my example. I'm going to be here. I've got the lesson that I'm going to translate. It's FCS 1 1 04 Belief and Faith in Jesus Christ. Now I am on my English version. I'm at the exercise list right here. I'm going to select the exercise I want to translate and it's the FCS 1-1-4 Belief and Faith in Jesus Christ. I'm going to click on it. That will pull up the exercise. This is what we're going to translate. First step is translate the text. Highlight all the text, all the narrative, as we call it. Command C or Control C. So copy it onto your clipboard. Now I'm going to move over to my translate. I'm going to copy all of that. Command V, Control C, excuse me, Control V. So now you see it's here. I told it to go to Spanish. So now I have the Spanish translation of this English narrative. I highlight it all. Sometimes you have to use the shift key and your down arrow to continue. So now I have selected all of the translated text. I'm going to copy it, right click it, or command C it, control C it. Now I'm going to come back over to my new document when the clipboard has the translated version. I'm going to paste it, match style. And this is your command. See, I'm just going to start saying copy. I'm going to say paste. I'm going to put the ES in here for Spanish. Now you can select all, go to font size, change it to 12, go to font color, change it to, this is the one, two, three, four, five, sixth row from the left or third from the right. It says navy blue. We click on that. Okay. Make sure you put in your language that you're translating to, ES in this case. So now we have all this narrative. Now we just have to format it. So we get it all. Again, go to font size 12, the navy blue. Now we're going to have to pull the scripture versions. Now in the Greek, we're using a definition, so we're going to have to trust its translation. For formatting, you can come back over to the English version and match the formatting, wherever it's bold, underlined, etc. 
So we come back over here. I take away the scripture verses because I don't want to trust the translator. We have the version of scripture in Spanish. So I'm just going to go through here and get rid of all but the reference when it comes to the verses. Keep the reference for obvious reasons so you know what you're going to work with. And there are the, the wording in between the scriptures is going to be in italics so that you'll know that it's different. It is my commentary, your commentary in between in the lesson. So, as you see as I scroll through, we're getting rid of the scriptural context, but we're leaving the reference. So now we're just down to the Greek, which is here. Now I'm going to start my formatting. Again, we can check with the English version, right here. We're going to make sure that our formatting matches the existing English version. So the word believe is underlined but not bolded. Scriptures are underlined and bolded. And text in between is all italics. So I'm going to do the same over here in my formatting. I'm going, before I really get too deep into formatting, I'm going to put all my scriptures in place. I have my Spanish version of the scriptures already up in my favorite uh, Bible app. I'm going to go up to John 3, 15. If you don't understand the Spanish that's written there, you can look at your English window, your third window, your first window on your second monitor. And that'll give it to you in English so you know right where to go. So now I have taken that Spanish scriptural text, copied it into my clipboard, and now I'm going to paste it into the lesson. I'll hit my delete key to bring it up to the same line. I am going to set it for the font size and make sure that the color matches. I'm not going to worry about the formatting of the front here. The word fe, which is faith, is going to be underlined but not bolded. I'm going to go to Galatians 3.22. So now I'm over here. I'm going to go to Galatians chapter 3. And it's verse number 22. Double check with my English version. Yes. Of course, it's going to be the same no matter what version you're on. The verse. So if it's 1 Corinthians, it's 1 Corinthians. So I'll come over here. I will paste it. Just like before, it did that. I'll hit delete to bring it up to the same line. And now I'll make them all 12 and make sure that it's the proper color. Jesus the Christ is underlined but not bolded. So I'm going to underline that. Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1, verse okay, 31 through 35. Wow. Thirty-five, thirty-one. Copy it. Come over to my document, paste it in. Now here you have to make sure that you get rid of all your superscripts, because that is a footnote with a link to the scripture in the internet. If you hit superscript twice, it will make all of the text the same. You won't see a superscript in the normal font. You're going to hit the break link, unlink, 
button. That takes the links off so it won't go to the internet. Now we come up here, hit delete, put it all in the same. I'm going to make the font size 12 and I'm going to make sure the color is adequate. I'm going to go to Matthew 16 and 16. Copy it. Bring it over. Paste it in. Do my delete. Make the font size 12. Make the color. This is the first text that we are writing in our narrative. I will make that italics. I am now ready to go to Galatians chapter 3 verse 22. I'm not going to belabor the whole thing, but I want you to see every step. Copy it into the clipboard, paste it, delete that line return, make them all the same font size and color. I'm going to John chapter 1. 12 through 13. Put it under my clipboard. Paste it. Start formatting that. Now, since we have an extra verse in there, you'll see right here where I have that link. I'm going to get rid of the link. I'm going to unlink it. Make sure that there are no superscripts. And if it blows up your formatting along the way, don't worry about it. It happens to me all the time. We have another explanation, which we were going to make all italics. John 3.36 is the last scripture verse. Go to 3. And verse 36, copy it, paste, format with the delete key, font size 12, color now. I'm going to go through all my verses, bold and underline my reference. It's part of the consistency theme. Underline. Okay, and then we bold the title. There is an additional, optional. Let me come over to this other screen. I'm going to copy it into the clipboard. So I'm going to grab the English and send it over to the translation. So here, I'm going to go back to my exercises. I'm doing 04. I'm going to edit I go to the pencil, I go to the edit, okay, edit, exercise settings, go to advanced, optional, gonna, whoop, Boy, a lot of extra stuff in that, gonna copy it. And then I'm going to bring it over.
Okay, I'm going to bring it over and I'm going to paste it. I'm going to paste it in. Get rid of any extra formatting that may have brought its way with you. Go for 12. Font color, navy blue. Now there's, I'm going to do a little bit of extra formatting. There's a finish button just like these buttons down here in the bottom. I'm going to make it look like that. So I'm going to change my text of the font. Text color is now going to be white. I'm going to use a highlighter, blue. And then I change the X. Whoop. My computer can be too fast at times. We're going to make that font size 14 and the color is going to be red. Third one down on the left column. I'm going to hit Validar or OK. I've just created that exercise. This is the narrative, as we call it, of the lesson. The narrative of the lesson. Now what we have to do is add questions. We're going to change, we're, well actually we're going to hit this button here, third one over, Nueva Pregunta, I think I said it correctly, that's new question. I'm going to click on that. It gives me the new question option. I'm going to go back to my scriptures and minimize this to get it out of the way. I'm going to go, this is my check area. Window number two is where I'm checking. You can see now it's already created. It's in gray, which means you cannot see it. Only the managers can see it. It's in gray. So we're going to hit edit. Now this is where we're going to just double check to make sure that the questions came in properly. This is where we're going to create it in the first window. Now we're going to go to the English version. and do our translating process. This is going to be a little bit more in depth. Here at the bottom, scroll all the way down, you'll see the questions in English. There's four of them. So here's where we're going to modify. That's going to pull up the question and we're going to go into Edit Answer. We're going to go to Edit Answers. And here's this particular question. The first one we're going to deal with is a true or false question. The reason we went into edit answers is so that we know the point value we're giving for the correct and incorrect answer and which answer we have to designate as being correct. And the others by default are incorrect. So we know that the, the first we're going to have is going to be a true false. First we're going to get the wording of the question put it into your clipboard, bring it over to the translation area, paste it in the English side, it will automatically translate it into Spanish, capture your Spanish, copy it to your clipboard. Now we're going to bring it all the way over to the new question that we're creating. I'm going to paste it in here and I'm going to paste it on top because that's going to be also the title of the question. I'm going to select it. I'm going to format it to 12. And what is that color? Burnt orange. I'm going to select the category and that this is a true false. I'm going to hit Validar or OK. I've just created the question. Now, I'm going to make this English, this Spanish version that you're looking at now, I'm going to make it just like the English, but translated. So there is the English, and we're going to run it through the translator. So 
so let's do that now. We have to we select the question. This is the response to the question. This is the answer. Copy it. Let's get it translated into Spanish. So I paste it in here at the English. This is let me copy that. Oh, I'm going to bring this over to my exercise that I'm creating and I'm working on the lesson answer. I am going to paste and match style or control V, just general paste. It's fine. I'm not doing much formatting here. In the English version, we put 25 points as the positive value. The negative value is going to be minus 20. So if they select the wrong one, they lose 20 on their running total. Right, so we're going to select the true as being the correct answer, or dog. We're going to go back over in the English, and we're going to select the false answer, and run that through the translator. So I'm going to copy that to my clipboard, bring this over. Let it translate. Copy that. Now I'm going to bring it over to the false answer. And paste it in here. All right? And I'm going to hit OK, the validar. That question is done. I'll come over to the second screen. And here I'm going to just make sure that everything was taken in properly. I'll hit refresh and there's my question. Again, this is exercise number 1104. All right, so that's how we do that. And you just do this for all of the questions until you have them all complete. That gives you the complete, without the video, mind you, the complete translation. I'm working right now on, uh, I'm going to set it up in YouTube to automatically do the translation and to have that come through as a closed captioning the translated text in the various languages so that we can actually put the videos in here as well and I'll show you how to do that later but right now we're just mostly interested in getting this out there and available for people that they can see it and as I QC this I notice that this scripture verse here Juan 1 12-13 the text of the verse is in black and not navy blue so I'm going to go back in I'm going to edit this I'm going to pull down my window so I can see more. And it takes a good keen eye to look for it. Go to navy blue. Double check that. And there is one more thing that I want to make sure that we do. I'm going to go back to the exercises in English. I'm going to go to the other screen so you can see what I'm proofing. I want to go to 4. And you'll notice that one thing that I've been missing is that the scriptures are all indented. And I did not do that over here, so I'm going to work on my format on my proof screen. I'm just going to click in here, and there is an indent button right here. Increase indent. Move it in. The cursor anywhere in that paragraph that you want moved in. And so proofing, QCing, whatever you want to call it, it has a lot of merit. It takes a very detailed eye, and usually you don't get that detailed eye unless you've made a lot of mistakes and you know how to look for them. <laughs> so that's how to do the translation, and this is the rough understanding so that you can you can get it. And other than that, I will talk to you individually. So thank you for your efforts and if this is something you think you can do, if you don't have two monitors you're just gonna have to have four windows open and just switch between them as needed. Thank you so much for your volunteering to do this. It's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>